My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Loyalty is a value that we, sorry, I got my words mixed. Loyalty is a quality that we value highly. I I couldn't get myself out of that sentence when I reversed the words, sorry. (laughs) We value loyalty. Maybe that's the easier way to say it. We want friends who are loyal, and we want to be loyal friends ourselves. We expect our families to be loyal. We hope for some modicum of responsibility from our supervisors, or if we're the one in charge, from our employees. In fact, every meaningful relationship involves loyalty in order for that relationship to thrive. We pledge allegiance to our country, acknowledging our citizenship, and we'll celebrate that allegiance this coming Tuesday on Independence Day. We're loyal, I hope, to our parish as a sign that we're members, that we value the Lord's presence in a particular manifestation in a community. I must say I love seeing our St. Joseph car magnets around town, all of that, all of our allegiance and our loyalty and, and, and parish pride. We like certain brands. We have brand loyalty and, and companies bet on the fact that we buy into that. We like certain authors, books, groups on our social media where we give our thumbs up or our like as a testimony of those things worth. We cheer for our own teams. We follow brands and we wear labels and shirts and hats and logos all over the place. We gather here to celebrate God's loyalty to us, God's devotion, and we express our devotion and our loyalty. This is what our worship is all about. As we call upon the Lord as our Savior, we acknowledge and express our fidelity. And we meet examples of fidelity today in the Scriptures. We meet a woman of influence in the first reading today. And she informs her husband that she'd like to make an investment in a certain Hebrew prophet, Elisha. As a citizen of Shunem, this would have been an irregular alliance. But essentially, this woman was opening her heart to the word of God because she was ready to welcome the prophet and, in fact, was trying to kind of create a guest room for him, perhaps hoping that he would visit regularly. St. Paul today speaks to us about baptism, and he reminds us that baptism unites us not only with Christ's life, but also Christ's death. Loyalty to Christ provides astounding benefits, he's really saying, including resurrection from the dead 
and eternal life. But we get there by taking up the cross, by way of surrender, a rather unspecific suffering and death to our own selfish desires. Our devotion is a response to God's devotion to us. And then we come to Jesus' words. He speaks bluntly that no love can be higher than our love for him. Not even family love. That ought to disturb us. It ought to be confusing because we really do want to love our families and we hold that family bond as quite sacred. But Jesus, and then even further, Jesus says, we're told that we can't hold our own lives as more precious than the loyalty we owe to Jesus. We have to be willing to lay down our own life. We have to love the Lord more than we love ourselves. In reality, and how all this makes sense, is that all those other loves, valuable as they are, become shaped by our love for the Lord. We learn all the more to die to self and to live for others. So if we love the Lord the most, married life becomes holy and sacramental. Parental love, where you do anything for your children, is literally your willingness to die to yourself, to lay down your life for one's friends. Family life, above all else, becomes the place of encounter with holiness because it's the place of mutually sacrificial love. It all gets reinterpreted through the lens of our love for the Lord above all else. We have to be willing to let go of perhaps even what little we think we have. Our devotion to the Lord would have us give selflessly. St. Teresa of Calcutta once told a story of a destitute family who had not eaten for days. They had come to her home, her convent of the Missionary Sisters of Charity, requesting help. Mother Teresa took food to the family. The mother of that family immediately divided what Mother Teresa brought her, divided it in half, and carried part of it off. And when she returned, Mother Teresa asked her, where did you go? And the woman gave the simple answer, to my neighbors, because they are hungry also. Mother Teresa recounted the story and said, I'm not surprised that she gave. Poor people are really very generous. I was surprised that she knew they were hungry. Because as a rule, when we are suffering, we're so focused on ourselves that we have no time for anyone else. The presence of Christ was in that poor family, not because they were poor, but because they served too. And that's Jesus' admonition, to look out for those in need, to receive the prophet as the woman of Shuman did, to give the little one a cup of cold water because they're a disciple. The call to follow Jesus and to love above all else moves us beyond our own comforts, we have to be willing to die to ourselves, to let go of our selfish desires. But this extends our vision so that we can see and find Christ in unexpected and hidden ways. This is all really about our seeking the Lord. Perhaps it's difficult in our world to find the presence of Christ amid hateful rhetoric, acts of violence, and constant fear of what might befall us next. I think the gospel sounds a call to renewal for us, to compassion, to charity, and to redouble our efforts to seek Christ as we strive to be like Christ so that others can find him in us. Deception, selfishness, Greed, self-preservation, and the desire for retaliation are not the characteristics of the disciple. The gospel clearly defines the challenge and the cost of discipleship. That we are called to surrender our own lives, to take up the cross, 
And it sounds difficult, but the reality is that through our baptism, we've already given over our lives. We have died to self so that we can live for the Lord. Jesus is telling us that we may be received as he would be, which means that others would find Jesus in us. So we're called to let Christ live in and through us. That's what it is to step back from ourselves so that people don't see us, but they see Christ. We do that because we recognize that the Lord has been so devoted to us as to lay down his life for us. Our devotion becomes the response. It might seem difficult because it is a high bar, but we let Christ live in us. We let his presence guide us and what he asks will not be impossible then because he will be the one doing it. St. Clair of Assisi once said, love him totally who gave himself totally for your love. Let that, let that be the benchmark that we love Christ as much as Christ loves us and everything else then falls into place. Amen? Amen.